I'm Kat Hobeta, I'm a primatologist at the University of St Andrews and for the last 15 years I've worked on the gestural communication of chimpanzees and gorillas. Ours was the first study to explore how they use that amazing system out in the wild. I started out in physics and I think it was that I thought if you worked with animals and you studied animal biology, you were going to be studying their bodies and ecology. It never occurred to me that behaviour was something that you could study as a subject. When I went to university and I discovered that you could study the evolution, not just of our bodies, but also of our minds and our communication, that just blew me away. It kicked me off on this trajectory of studying what chimpanzees do, how they communicate with each other, and what that tells us about our own communication. I aim to spend as much of their day as I can just with them. Following them, essentially just in a really <laughs> subtle way, stalking them around the rainforest with a camera, trying to capture exactly what they get up to and who they get up to that with. Their day is my day. If they go for a long 30k hike, I go for a big hike. If they sit themselves down at nine o'clock in a massive fruit tree and spend the whole day stuffing their faces, I just get to sit under that and watch all of the little, you know, kind of soap opera of their day-to-day -day life unfold. A lot of people who studied primate communication, especially if you want to know whether or not it relates to human language or um, how it might be different, have looked at primate vocalizations. Very few people though had looked at all of the other ways that primates communicate. They have 70 or 80 different gestures, they are using them every day to negotiate all of these different aspects of their lives. And an awful lot of what they do with gesture looks a lot more like what we do with language. One of the gestures that I think wouldn't be very familiar to us is um, you get these beautiful big loud scratches which can be either come and groom me or actually I'd like to groom you. Sometimes those nuances are to do with your rank or your position in the group or whether or not you're a male or a female. So especially when the females are in estrus when they're ready to have a baby, then the males are regularly going to be, could I groom you? How's it going? And, <laughs> you know, laying it on with a trowel, all of the kind of like, you know, this is the chimp equivalent of bringing flowers is kind of, let me groom you. When a mum chimp um, wants the baby to climb on her back, because maybe she needs to travel a bit more quickly, then what she'll do is she'll stop and she'll just present the back of her foot, because often the little ones are tagging along behind down the trail, and she'll just sort of lift the back of her foot and sometimes if she wants to give this little wobble and the young one knows that's time, jump on my back, we've got to get going now. I completely fell in love with chimpanzees the first time I saw them and it's really this sense that when you spend time with them, as much as I'm watching them and studying them, they're watching me back. There's been days when I've followed chimpanzees through the rainforest and sat down and I've heard what I assumed was one of our field assistants coming up behind me and I turn around to find that there's one of the kind of young male chimps just sitting down there like watching me, trying to work out what on earth is going on. And that sense of familiarity, um, that sense of connection that you get when you get to work with these apes, it, it's such a privilege. Every time I spend another day with them, I learn something new about them. We have so many different challenges, um, whether that is things from deforestation to climate change. And right now, what we're in the middle of this global pandemic, really, it's an existential threat to them. Chimpanzees are almost certainly vulnerable to coronavirus, and they probably will have a higher mortality rate than humans if it gets into their population. Realistically, we are looking at a very real chance of losing large groups, even possibly species of apes over the next few years, whether it's with this pandemic or a future one. 
But then on the flip side, I know, I know that the work that we are doing, it might not protect all chimps, but I can at least help some of them. And I know that, for example, in the research sites where we work, we see a decrease in poaching and illegal logging. We are able to collaborate together with communities to come up with different solutions so that communities can access the resources they need, but we can also help to conserve and protect the forest so that they sustain those resources for generations to come. If I think on the global scale, it, it does, you know, it is something that you know, might make you freeze up and just give up. But if you think on the small scale and you just think, okay, what can I do today? I know this makes a difference. I know that those chimpanzees are still there and that bit of forest is still there because we're going to go to work today and we're going to go to work tomorrow and we're just going to keep at it one day at a time. And, and you know, just bringing it back down to that scale really helps, um, helps keep us motivated and helps keep us going. It's really difficult to think of a good bit of advice that I can pass on because I feel like so much of what I've done has been this series of incredible fortunate coincidences, right? It's this, there was never a plan, and I ended up in this amazing career and this wonderful situation, um, getting to do something that I love. But I think something that was always the case the whole way through was um, each time something came up, if I was really excited by it, if I was really passionate about it, I gave it a go. And there are lots of really good reasons why some of those choices could have been really daft and were in retrospect, but each time I made a daft choice, it did open up doors to the next one. And so your trajectory and your plan does not have to be this linear thing you organize. It, you can bounce from idea to idea, but as long as you're excited about that idea, it really doesn't matter if it worked. It's, it might be what just takes you to the next step. So get excited about it and just keep going no matter what happens.